Greetings, Vault Hunters all across the six galaxies. Welcome to the Bordercast. We are live at our usual time, Thursdays, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm Mitsu. And I'm Tessichka, bringing you all things Borderlands every week. Thank you so much for joining us, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Liz, the amazing <laughs> 55. Hi. <laughs> Indeed, it's Liz so is here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're happy to have you here, back. I'm still not quite sure. I know we had you on at least once, right? I think so, yeah, I, a long time ago, like at least over a year like ago. it's been twice. Oh, hello. <laughs> I, I think it's been at least twice but it's been forever 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 I, yeah, and i think we know. get confused because we see each other every couple weeks for, for yeah, ultimate ultimate <laughs> yeah yeah i just saw you yeah, totally oh yeah no, that's okay oh I right know, we i don't know does bordercast know that you guys are are the the uh awesome people behind the scenes on uvh sort of uh, uh, we well, talk about we, it a little bit yeah every every now and again we we mention it uh, a little bit um that's that's kind of why I want to like have more conversations during UVH where it's like, oh, our producers are trying to get us to do X, Y, and yeah. Z, like that off screen kind of thing. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. That's that's actually the director of UVH right yes. there. <laughs> I love that bow tie. Oh my god. All right. Thank you. So <laughs> I'm gonna, cute. I'm gonna try and focus up for a second as we get through everything real quick. As always, we want to take a minute to thank our new listeners on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, and those watching live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Steam, or later on the VOD on YouTube. If you are enjoying the program, we would love for you to give us a big old like, follow, or favorite. Since we bring you that hard-hitting coverage of of Borderlands. That's kind of what we do here. That's that's our thing. That's our shtick. Yeah. Um. Very important ongoing news things. Crossplay is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I promise. It's happening. <sighs> just just please trust us. It's happening. We we don't know when, but it's happening. Okay. Uh. The Borderlands show happened. Uh. Just last week. It is up on the podcast sites. Uh, we recapped it in the last Borecast episode, which is also up on the podcast sites. Also, the last uh, super awesome episode of Ultimate Vault Hunter is, you guessed it, up on the podcast sites. Uh, and you can catch the VODs on Twitch and YouTube. Thank you very much, by the way, for everybody watching um, whatever platform you're watching on. If you are watching via Steam and you would like to come chat, uh, you know, pick your poison, Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. We do look at the chats there, so come and join us if you would like to. Uh, some other news. Gearbox merged with Embracer, so now they basically have some nitrous uh, oxide funding in their in their toolkit, in their in their vehicle to drive them forward faster, you know, better, stronger, etc., which is really, really, really cool. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands is out right now on Xbox. PlayStation, uh, Xbox One, PS4, uh, Xbox Series X and S and PS5 with backwards compatibility and PC. It's back. It's available on Steam and I believe also Epic. And it's coming to the Nintendo Switch on March 24th, which is so that was a cool. Big one. Yeah. 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 When when that happened during yesterday's Nintendo Direct, I was like, uh oh, this is this is a good news. This is a real good news. People have been asking it. for a while, and I was like, I don't know, that would be really cool. And then they announced it. I was like, yes! I don't even own a Switch because I can't with my hand, but I know a lot of my friends do, and I'm just excited for all of you guys. If you haven't played it, first of all, Fran, you have no freaking excuse anymore. <laughs> Zero excuse. <laughs> Play the thing. It's really good. <laughs> Um, I actually started a new playthrough of it uh, yesterday on the Borderlands channel, so I'm going to be continuing that over the next couple weeks uh, just to play through it again because I love it. I'm trying to make different choices so that I see how things change because it's one of those like choose your own adventure kind of things. Um, have you played it, Liz? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, uh -oh. I played Borderlands 1, 2, and 3, but I've never played the pre-sequel and I've never played Tales from Borderlands. So I know, I know, I know. I'm not a true Borderlands fan. But no, hey, you're it's a fan. To Switch? You're, yeah, it's coming to the Switch. Okay, so I'm coming first to Switch. Of all, I want to sit in my bed and play yeah. Tales from Borderlands. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> okay. Do we know when it's coming out? The 24th. March 24th. March 24th. Yes. Yeah. I, so you're in real good shape to be able to enjoy it as soon as games. it comes out. Um, 
which is which is good. I don't think March is too heavy on video games, so yeah. you could definitely sneak a what Tales from the excuse me Tales from the Borderlands is probably what between all five episodes, five episodes, six episodes, five episodes, I think. five episodes. I had it right. Okay, yeah. Um, what maybe twenty thirty hours maybe. Uh. I don't know. I'm very slow. I'm very slow. So I'm a very bad. Like somebody if, told me one of them was like a uh, pre sequel. Is it pre sequel is only like seven hours of the story or something? Something like that. Pre sequel is short on story, but but long it, on again, side it quests depends. and stuff. Yeah, it, there's yes. a lot of side quests, and also like if you ever just want to play the pre sequel, I want to play it with you because it's fun. It's fun. Sweet. Like, yeah. Do you remember Skywell? Uh, in Borderlands 3, that whole environment on the as asteroid where you're kind of bouncing around with the low yeah. grav. It's like that, but more so. Like, the oh. low gravity is a thing. You also have to worry about oxygen, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not that annoying. Mm. It's really Like a survival cool. kind of game. Kind of, yeah. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. And it's just fun. And you can, like, use it to your advantage, like, bounce people and bounce yourself. And it's just cool. It's very cool. Are you going to bounce me off the map? Is that, what, is that what's going to happen? No, Are you gonna barrel me somehow? <laughs> if we get beans <sighs> to play with us, then yes, it That's will happen. So <laughs> we should do that. Yes. That would be oh great. my goodness. Uh, let's see what else. Jamie Lee Curtis has signed on to be Tannis, and Jack Black will be our claptrap in the Borderlands movie. We're going to talk about all the casting choices with our very own resident actress. Okay, I don't know if all of you guys know this, but Liz. 55 is actually Elizabeth Oland, who has starred in several movies uh, and many, many commercials and is moving back to L.A. to pursue acting further in the very near future. So if you guys want to check out her IMDb, you can do that. And she has a, a much greater knowledge and perspective on the whole acting movie industry than we do. So we can speculate, me and Mitsu, as like viewers and watchers the <laughs> film she's actually been in many of them so it would be really cool to get what her thoughts on everything um more on that soon what else what else borderlands 3 ultimate edition is 50 percent off right now on microsoft steam and epic game stores now the ultimate edition i believe includes everything that uh, that's I all think the season pass yeah both i want to say everything both i only think it's season pass one i think so yeah really? yeah yeah Okay. I think yeah, Ultimate Edition is the was the one that's like ninety nine dollars originally. Okay, okay, okay. I always get these confused. Okay, so Ultimate Edition fifty percent off. So you get the the base game and the first four DLC for half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and then if you want to buy DLC five and DLC six, those are each fifteen dollars separately if you choose to get them. Or is there a season pass that you could buy? Oh, I there is a like season pass. Yeah, I think it's twenty nine ninety nine. So it's like almost the same. Almost so, the same price. So yeah. I'm bad at my job. And oh, just to double check, because I didn't want to both. talk out my butt, it is everything. You get oh, everything. Is it? everything. It you get everything. Season Pass 1, you get Season Pass 2, you get the Butt Stallion Pack, the Retro Cosmetic Pack, the Neon Cosmetic Pack, the Gearbox Cosmetic Pack, the Toy Box Weapons Pack, and equipable XP and Loot Drop Boost mods that last you until about, I think, level 10 or 12 when they finally uh, uh, fade off oh, a that's good. Bit That'll get you to Sanctuary and everything. And yeah. almost to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Super Deluxe, Mystique Sired in chat, thank you, was saying, I, I always get them confused. Uh, the Super Deluxe was the one that just had Season Pass 1. So Ultimate Edition oh. includes Season Pass 1, Season Pass 2, you get the first four super awesome story DLCs, of which the fourth is the best one ever, because Maya and Krieg are adorable. Um, and <laughs> and uh, also, like, I love all of the DLCs. They're all really, 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 really good. And uh, you get DLC 5, which is Arms Race, and DLC 6, which is coming March 18th, I believe, yes. right? And yes. that is going to have a whole new bunch of story missions with Ava. We get to know a little bit more about her, get to know her deeper story, hopefully get to respect her and see her grow up a little bit, which would be really cool. And also you get a ton of really awesome cosmetics and uh, raid boss. Sounds yes. pretty good to there, me. There is a raid boss <laughs> and it's very good. Yeah, really cool. I ain't going to say anything else right now, though. <laughs> Mitzi's actually <laughs> played it. He's played yeah. it. I'm very jealous of this. Yeah. Very, very. I, you know, I, well, it goes back and forth. Like, I under, I know, I hear this all the time. People say, oh, I'm jealous of Mitzi. You get to do the thing. But you have to look at it from both sides. Like, I can't participate, like, in good conscience, I can't participate in any events of people, like, speed killing for world first bosses anymore. I can't. I don't get to experience things live with everybody. Mm. Like everybody's going to do this at the same time, except for me, Greg and Fran. 
because nobody else has played it yet as far as i know except well and everybody in gearbox obviously in 2k yeah exactly right so it's like Not it's me. like yeah no exactly and it's like it, it sounds like it's great because you get to experience content beforehand but then on the flip side it's like it kind of takes the excitement out of everything because you want to experience it new and fresh with everybody but you're not going to because once that genie's out of the bottle you can't put it back in yeah no? there's no world first for you mm-hmm that's okay. The only time I've ever gotten... I've, no, I've never gotten world first on anything. The only time I ever got first for anything was when I got server first, uh, Trial of the Grand Crusader and World of Warcraft without anybody dying during it. And that's how I got the title Grand Crusader. I only claim the fame ever in anything. That's it. That's all I got. So. Nerd. <laughs> uh, yeah. Big time. Tell me about it. It's awful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very distracted. Uh, we, we had to put this like special collar on my cat um and it has like a big um uh, like sensor thing that's kind of like it's actually not that heavy and it's fine for her to wear she's she she doesn't care it's really funny you just give her a treat and she'll wear an outfit my cat is very strange um but anyway it's just a collar and it's got this like big thing and it looked very industrial and we were like Maybe we can make it cute. And Rob was like, maybe we can put a, this is totally unrelated to Borderlands. I'm so sorry. But he was like, maybe you could put a bow tie on it or something. So I looked up bow tie and the first thing that came up was an avocado bow tie. And so I bought it for like $2 on Amazon. It came, I took it off the, the collar that was already on and I sewed it onto this one. And now we have bow tie Gingy and it's the Aww. best thing ever. <laughs> Anyway, um, Broken Hearts Day is in full swing. Have you guys gotten a wedding invitation yet? It's really nice. That last episode that Liz did on Ultimate Vault Hunter with the amazing TBJ underscore Quag uh, with Lovebot was so fun for me to edit because uh, Quag sent me a bunch of footage of him making those really, really, really sexy like snipe shots. And it just, it's, it looks so satisfying when you use that thing correctly. And he does that gloriously, gloriously. So if you haven't checked out that episode yet, it is available on the Ultimate Vault Hunter collection on the Twitch channel and on YouTube and also in podcast form on whichever platform you prefer. Spotify, of course, is amazing, but all of them are amazing. Yeah. So what have you been up to this past week, Liz? <laughs> Me? Uh, I don't know. Am I allowed to talk about other games? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not necessarily uh, not allowed to talk I've about. I've been playing other games, a but... survival game that is super, super punishing if you are not geared properly. And um, I mean, I guess that, that that's you know, you could say that about any game. Like Borderlands, it, it, you could go in some place and die a bunch of times and lose all your money and, and that type of thing. But uh, but this one, you just lose all your stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like it was really hard it's like the old days god they, yeah, they, yeah uh, I could, <laughs> we could talk about the old days of everquest for an hour and i could be like hey yeah remember all those times i couldn't get back to my body and lost all my experience because i couldn't get rezzed <laughs> yeah that's the thing you lose it you lose xp so you lose like levels that you've gained like when you level your like jump ability or your like melee ability like you that lose sucks. the level so. oh man yeah, that's man. that's that's rough i mean i feel like I feel like games in general, like all games have to have some kind of punishment for dying, right? Um, and it makes sense. And I've played too many games like Souls games or the Souls style games that are very like, they put you back location wise and then you have to run past a whole bunch of new, of new enemies and things like that. So there's always some kind of punishing thing. Um, and with Borderlands, I think it's, it's a, it's a decent punishment. It's not like well, yeah, it's a ten percent punishment. You yeah. don't get you don't get a crazy penalty. Yeah, and it's like you're never gonna. It's never gonna completely stop your progress because no matter how low I so when I first started Borderlands, started playing like years ago, I was very confused about the whole new use station thing because I was like, what if I run out of money? But it's ten percent of whatever you have, so it's literally impossible to not have enough money to revive. Um, even if you have like next to nothing, you never really have nothing. Um, right. but it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those things where like, if you're playing something like a takedown or a future raid boss that cost you, I think it's 500 Iridium to get into, it's going to be punishing. Um, but it should be when it's 
a, a, co a piece of content that you want to be challenging when you're looking for a challenge in a survival game. Survival games are like something, something else. They're like a whole different. I mean, arms race is kind of a survival game, right? If yeah. you die, you start all the way back from the beginning, right? That's the whole idea of arms race. But you don't have to run and get all your gear again. You have to, I mean, yeah. you, you got to like start over entirely fresh, yeah. which is actually worse in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that was the idea behind arms race, at least in, from my view of it, that it was going to be incredibly punishing if you died, right? Like it was going to, it's like, it's like going to a casino almost. Um, obviously, it's, you're not gambling anything in real life, but your you're, life. Yeah, you're, you're gambling <laughs> your in game life and you're gambling on, like, you're taking a chance on the loot that you might have gotten in that run. It might have yeah. been amazing, incredible loot and. Like, maybe you have it on you and you die and that's it. It's gone forever. But you could win and it could be incredible and it could carry you through the rest of the game. Or, or you know, you could use it to fight that takedown boss that you've been struggling against and it's really cool that way. So, Or it could be the perfect piece of loot for your build for something like Ultimate Vault Hunter. So <laughs> Liz, having played these these other games now and and you talk about the punishment that that comes along with death. Do you think that Borderlands could benefit or it just doesn't fit into the current scheme of how the game is designed? Like would you want to see something a little bit more punishing and or, or not necessarily unforgiving but something something more than just oh I lost 10% of my money because that that scale doesn't it like it punishes you, but it doesn't really punish you because how much does money matter after a certain point? You know, I mean, I don't know. I think it would be a cool idea to have a Borderlands game that was in that vein. But I think it would I think it would uh, diverge from what we know and love as Borderlands, you know, like making your build and having your build be, you know, super OP and collecting loot and hoarding and filling up your vault all the way. You know, it's like uh, I, I just think that I think. I don't know. It might make things more precious in that way. So you're not just collecting all the loot and like, well, I got to go back to Sanctuary now and dump all my crap off. Like, <laughs> you know, like if you're like, oh my God, what if I don't make it back to Sanctuary and then I die and then I lose all my stuff? You know, like that could be interesting. Yeah. But but uh, then it, then that would also call for uh, hosted servers or local servers or that type of thing. And, yeah. and that would be a whole another mess of yes. Yeah. You know, on another, on another layer to the game. I wonder if the modding community could like do that with different locations. Like I, I totally have no idea if this is even possible, but just my crazy brain is like, maybe they could just take electricity and be like, okay, electricity in this mod is a survival game and you have to like get gear and then go kill kill a vault. And then you get some epic loot from that. And you can only make uh, basically make electricity into arms race. If that makes sense. Mm. That'd be kind of neat. So it would be like instance, like arms race, but to other locations in the game that already mm. exist that we know and love, right? Uh, that would be kind of interesting, actually. I, you call it Brutal something. Lands. Yeah, Brutal Lands. Oh my brutal god, that'd be cool. Brutal. I've been sitting on that one for, <laughs> for about five minutes now. <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> so yeah, what have you been up to, Mitsu? <laughs> well, Broken Hearts is out. And I'm a very happy boy because I have waited for an on-level wedding invitation for, I would say, let's see, it, 65 was made level cap in September, so probably about September. Because it's, it's, because, like, all of the fun guns that were available over the past year, and we can even talk a little bit about Revenge of the Cartels, because we're all oh, anxiously God. waiting. I know! I know! I know. Ooh, give me my OPQ system. <laughs> Three hundred and ninety. Oh, soon, I miss that gun so much. It soon was so enough. Good. God, I pop, hope. Pop, 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 pop. That's my favorite. It was the best. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing goes. Skrit. <laughs> I didn't think I could do that. Um, yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> thank you. I practice. She's fucking today. great. What? <laughs> oh well okay fine would you rather we just talk about wood blockers for a little while Liz? Uh, 18? <laughs> 18? 
right. Well, we'll talk about that a little <sighs> bit later. That's the tease for staying around for the interview section. Didn't of our they buff show. the woodblocker? Didn't didn't <laughs> didn't Lazy Data do like a full takedown playthrough with woodblockers only or something ridiculous like that? He did it because he's him. Yeah, I don't. I don't normal yeah. human beings can't do it, but Lazy's I mean, not normal. Yeah, Lazy is like on a completely different level of humanity from the rest of us. Yeah. Um, him being able to do something definitely doesn't mean that regular old Tess or Mitsu or even Liz, who was very OP, could could do it. But I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't tried a woodblocker ever. I don't think I've ever maybe, actually Maybe Quack used could it. do it, too. I'd see yeah, Quack. I mean, Quack, Quack, Quack has, that sniper, has that sniper build. He says he has terrible aim in that man. Um, no, I'm sorry. I edited the the Ultimate Vault Hunter episode to which lying. he sent. Yeah, he's lying. <laughs> he's lying. He's Not full you. of it. <laughs> he's quite good. It's very cool. He's like, all oh, my aim's all over the place. He tries, to, he tries to make it sound like he's really bad at the game, and he is not. <laughs> You know what that's called? Humility, okay. and it's a wonderful trait to have. It's true. I don't have it, but. <laughs> <laughs> God well, damn is it. it. Isn't that how oh. actors are supposed to be? They're supposed to be all. <laughs> full of um, myself? I mean, I don't know. No, no, just be, extremely but... confident in themselves. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to call it that. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve to be confident. You're amazing. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know, Liz, 55, is an actual actress, and she is in the process of moving back to L.A., hopefully in the next several months, to continue that uh, career path as well as streaming and doing all the cool hosting things that she already does. Um, and so we, we decided to have her back on today to talk about both the Borderlands movie and the casting choices for that and maybe her insights on why things are the way they are, maybe. Um, but also we want to learn a little bit more about her because we, I think we did like a mini intro to who is Liz when she joined the team, but it wasn't like an in-depth thing. So let's do it right now. So, ah, okay. <laughs> so who is 55? Tell us about uh, you. Well, uh, surprise, I have a real name. It's Elizabeth Olin. Uh, I have been in a lot of films and television, tons of commercials. Uh, um, I don't know. I used to live in LA and then I moved away because I was like, King Kathalian, you guys know King Kathalian? He's part of the Borderlands stream team. I've, I've, I've heard of him once You've or twice. Just a couple he times. Might be a, King Kathalian, Professor Sounds Roman. familiar. <laughs> He was He's like, awesome. uh, he was like, move to Tampa. It's going to be great. We're going to have a bunch of friends move down here and uh, everybody's going to live here and we're going to have streamer parties and what, whatnot. And I was the only person who moved. So, <laughs> oh. so uh, while I did make friends and it was great. Uh, and, you know, I'm obviously friends with the, uh, with King Italian, Professor Broman, uh, Darkest 49, K Magic 101, like all those guys that live down there and stuff like that. Omni Waffle, you know, um, I, I think they're they're super great. I just uh, I I this is personal. I just went. I just got through a breakup uh, recently, and so instead of finding a new place in Tampa, I opted to move back in with my parents in Kentucky for a brief period of time, and then get my shit together and move back to LA. Get back in the wagon this, on the wagon on the horse. Person, how long horse? did you live in LA? You lived there for a long time, didn't you? Seven years. That's a Oof. really long time to live in a place. You probably got to know it pretty well. Like, I think the longest I've ever lived anywhere is actually, well, New York and also here. But New York, I never lived in the same place. And mm -hmm. I've lived in this place uh, for about that long. And, and it's weird. Like, I know the area really well. And thinking of moving is weird. And if I ever left, yeah. I would definitely want to come, come back. So I totally get that. It's really cool. Yeah, I still feel like LA is my home, you know? Yeah. Like you, every time, like I still listen to KPCC, which is like the the local like NPR station. It's- uh, That's pretty cool. It's it's what I listen to every day when I get ready for stream. It's still, I still am like in love with LA and I can't get it out of my brain. So I don't know. Maybe it's I the just, place you're meant to be. Maybe, hopefully, that's the idea. The idea is still to stream when I get there, like audition during the day, stream at night. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But Ooh, I don't know. It's what else? Be good. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll be a tough life, but like I, you've you've talked for a little while now. You know, we've had conversation about this where you you really wanted to to make that jump back. Yeah. Over to LA. 
And, you know, it, it sucks that things didn't quite work out down south, but that's just how life goes sometimes, you know, that's that's the way it is. So you making this move sounds like the, the perfect idea. And because you're here and we can do these kinds of things, even though how how far do our words go? You should be in the Borderlands movie. I am just man. Saying. Seriously, and and seriously. Uh, uh, if if you were going to go, I'll I'll let you speak for yourself on this one. Which role do you think you would fit or want to do the most in the Borderlands movie? Make me Moxie, please. Yes, <laughs> yes. She would be an incredible Moxie. Like like. Oh my god! All, actual acting chops. Okay, like serious. And chops. I'm doing dark hair. Dark hair. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, so so this is a this is a side question, and we'll we'll cover this question later. We'll get to this question. We'll come back to it. Um, I I don't understand why people get upset about casting choices when someone doesn't look like a character necessarily, because they can do so much with the current technologies of today to make someone look however they want, right? But the acting chops have to be there first of all. Sure. Right. And the less they have to do to make you look like the person, the better. Right. And whether or not you can embody the character in terms of like your personality and your ability, your acting ability and all that stuff. That's all up. That's all up to the person. Right. And like, I feel like Liz would do an incredible freaking job all around. <laughs> I would love to be Moxie. Oh, my God. Somebody in chat said <clears throat> that I should play Tiny Tina, which I don't know. I feel like Tiny Tina would be great, but I, I don't know. Um, I just don't know. I just don't know if I'm right for Tina. Like, it'd be it'd be cool. I think you could be right for Tina if it was based around Borderlands 3. But in Borderlands 2, it yeah. should probably be somebody a little bit younger playing her. But, well, because she's a 13-year-old. Um, but but exactly. here's the thing. Kate Blanchett is, like, not the same age as, you know... Lilith, or at least what oh, we Lilith, interpret yeah. to be the same age as Lilith. Absolutely not. Same thing with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Tannis. I always yeah. interpreted her as maybe a, a late 20s or th early 30s woman. Uh, but Jamie Lee Curtis, I believe she's she's in, in her, her 50s? 50s now. No, maybe. I think she's in her 60s. Is she? I feel like we looked this up the other day. I don't even remember right now. I think right we now, did look I, this up, and I yeah. don't remember what it was. Um, but also, cause, cause the, the actual is... answer surprised me. Nope, nobody knows how old anybody 62. is. 62. Oh, thank you. 62. Yeah. Holy guacamole. She looks now, like she's like maybe 49, 50. See, I thought Anne Hathaway would make the perfect tennis. Yes. Okay. Oh okay. my God. Yes. Right? All right. The short hair. She's got, yes. she just, she's animated. And Anne Hathaway, if you have seen her in any of like she's any little... of her movies, she is a chameleon and yeah. she can absolutely do it. And she's a little bit like she's okay. So she's I don't, quirky. I don't actually know if she's awkward in real life. Although I have met her in real life. Well, in that briefly. one movie, Princess Diaries, she's yeah. super awkward. So like right when she did Princess Diaries, I happened to stumble into her, like like not actually stumble, but like be in the same Starbucks line or whatever. And uh, and I didn't say anything, but I just thought it was That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, it was random. But I it, I think she does awkward really well. Like I don't think she's actually awkward at all, but at least. How would I know? But at least she did awkward really well in that movie and in a couple of other things that I've seen her in. Um, what was that movie with? Uh, was it, did she do The Devil Wears Prada? That was her. Yeah, she did Devil yeah. Wears Prada. Yeah. So there were some did. good awkward moments in that one too. <laughs> so, yeah, I just I just really thought In Hath would make would make the perfect uh, the perfect tennis. Now, if there's somebody to play Moxie though, who's your like, idea to play Moxie? If it's not me, uh, who you would know. be you. Dad <laughs> You, Dado. <laughs> that's that's like a, a slightly veiled inside joke. I'll, I'll break it down just two seconds. Um, we have a friend in the streaming community, Dado. He's a wonderful uh, human being, and sometimes he does some cross playing. And one of the cross play choices that he once had was Mad Moxie. I think it was to coincide was with the launch beautiful. of Borderlands. It was it was absolutely incredible. He he actually did a really really good job with it. Um, so that's I had to get that one out there. That's that's my joke. <laughs> I think, uh, well, King Italian mentioned the other day, Kat Dennings would make a good moxie. Okay. And I thought that was interesting, but I think Dita Von Teese would make the perfect moxie. Ooh. Oh. That's okay. fair. I could yeah. see that. I could. She wouldn't really have to that. do anything. She would just show yeah. up and be yeah. moxie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's true. That's yeah. actually very true. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, that yeah. would be a good But thing. here's the problem with some of these castings, though. And, you know, you're talking about, like, everybody's like, well, why did they cast this person? Why did they cast this person? The, the thing is that people don't realize is that um, sometimes there's investors and the investors are overseas and you're trying to appease investors in order to get a movie sold. So, like... In order to sell a movie, they need to uh, pre-sell a movie. They'll they'll have to do it based on who's in the movie already. So like mm-hmm. they'll 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 pre-sell it and say like, oh, we've got two million in pre-sales, so we can give you two million dollars for your movie. Um, so like one investor will do that, and then they got to do that with a ton of investors. So in in order to uh, appease the investors, you need names. So you got to have people who are already established, and. Um, so that's the difficulty that a lot of a lot of independent movies run into and a lot of uh, uh, just a lot of movies in general run into that you have to sell. They're like, why? Why is Nicolas Cage in another movie? Like, because they have to sell the movie somehow. And, and they he's know. a name. This yeah. is an exactly name. why we wanted to yeah. have you on for this discussion. Because that makes perfect never sense. occurred like, to me. I had no idea about that at all. That's actually... And, yeah. and you can okay. give an example. You could be like, you, we'll use Nicolas Cage. Let's say Nicolas Cage. They just know that he does well, for example, in China. And you're right. looking to build a giant blockbuster movie like Borderlands, for example, and you want to make sure that there is some outreach to the Chinese market. Yeah. So you say, all right, well, we know Nicolas Cage is an established guy. Let's bring him in this movie. And the investor goes, oh, well, at least I know I'm going to make my return real quick, uh, mm-hmm. quick plus extra, whatever residuals I decide to sign on for 1%, 2% of the gross, whatever the case may be. And then, boom, you know that like the movie winds up doing really well because that particular market just happens to really love that particular actor or actress. It makes perfect sense. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy how they sell movies. I, I never knew. I, I went to I went to um, one of these like uh, independent uh, market sales events one time and it was insane. They like these people will go and they'll be like an investor will like sit in a room and be like, well, we were thinking that you would give us this much and they like write it down. like like in a movie they like write it down in a piece of paper and like slide it across the table and they're like well we were thinking this much and then they like negotiate based on the little piece of paper that they like slide across the table it's <laughs> it's it's insane and then they're like that's how you get your investment money for independent movies so i don't know i don't if know I how may, it works with big budget you know productions and stuff like that but i know about independence is is that why like it's so important that you have like the sundance film festival and the Cannes film festival like all of those places like that's where these kinds of negotiations would take place basically um i don't i don't think that those negotiations happen uh in in places like that it's more of like uh like a production company will buy a movie that has been made already and say okay. we'll give you money for the fact that you already made the movie and then they can pay their actors and they can pay their production fees and and whatnot and, and then that way they have like if they need to do reshoots they have like a budget to do reshoots and you know stuff like that so that's kind of brave by the way to to like fully develop and create a movie and then push it out at a film festival like that in the hopes that you're going to make it back because your film yeah. is seems that good jesus that takes some balls yeah. Holy crap. And, and even to get it into <clears throat> sundance is is just a feat in and of itself like i had a I, Okay, I'm gonna toot my own horn for a second. Go ahead. I was I was in a I was in a film. Uh, I had a teeny little part in a short film that won an Academy Award and uh, for best short film. Um, and it never it it got shown at Sundance. Like it was at a it was at a uh, uh, a theater, and you could view it while you're at Sundance. But it was not part of the Sundance Film Festival. Oh. So it never got shown at Sundance, but it won an Academy Award, which like just even being in the environment will like get you notoriety. And like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. But like he didn't he didn't make it into Sundance, but he won the guy who made it won an Academy Award, which is really interesting. That's amazing. That's that's crazy how that works. You think that there would be some sort of like hierarchy, but it just doesn't work that way. It's like this aspect of the industry seems to be a little bit more isolated from this one not necessarily isolated but like it's compartmentalized and occasionally there's some overlap and crossover but like it's it's not just a ladder to climb it's it's many different and then you have to make lateral movements and it's it's more like wrecking crew than it is just uh donkey kong if you will which that that analogy three people are gonna get it nobody else is but that's what i'm going with (laughs) I don't get it. I'm glad you guys got it. Not but... I don't get it. Oh, you don't get it? Uh, Donkey Kong, because all you're doing is you're just climbing up ladders as opposed to Wrecking Crew, where there's like d- tons of different ladders. So sometimes there's lateral movement. Sometimes you have to cross on the right hand side of the screen, come on, on the left side hand side of the screen, and you have to destroy things here. It's it's a very strategic game. They both came out about the same time. They're both Nintendo oh. games. And and it's just like you're you're looking to destroy all of these different things in Wrecking Crew. 
Um, but you can't just go up and then destroy it all the way down. Sometimes you have to move left. Sometimes you have to move right. Sometimes you have to jump down in order to go up a different section. So instead of Donkey Kong, which is just climb up all the way to get to Donkey Kong. So that's that's kind of what that one was about. And like, I know that was very obscure, but that's where my brain went. So I <laughs> yeah. apologize to everybody. Thank you for explaining then. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we're we're running all over the place, and I I have like thirty seven thousand different questions that we have for you here. Um, but man, I'm so glad that we jumped into the, the movie stuff. We're definitely going to get uh, into it a little bit more. Let's let's try and steamroll through some of these other ones though, because some people don't know, and those people make me sad. How did you come up with your stream name, Liz? Oh me! Oh God! Uh, there's a meme. It's like twenty years old. It's it's literally one of the oldest memes that i could even think of uh in it's a, it's a it's a it's an old flash video from a website called albinoblacksheep.com um called 55 and i spelled it wrong on accident and now it's my name and it's everywhere and now i can't take it back so did you i thought you nailed the spelling i thought it was oh s e h f I spelled it S C H V. I thought it was. V oh, I have to go back and watch it now. Yeah, I spelled it wrong, but it's good though because like I got my screen name on almost everything except for Xbox. Some jerk has my screen name on Xbox, but yeah, it's close. I got almost everything. I have you know Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, everything is fifty five. So nice. But hopefully, hopefully they don't come back and say like that's our IP and you stole it. No, because <laughs> oh, what? Group X, I'm group a X fan. comes after you. <laughs> yeah i'm a fan i like your stuff one I mean, letter I is different it's different it's fine it's different <laughs> it's different enough <laughs> yeah very true oh my god one. arnold schwarzenegger as mr Torque would be amazing i'm sorry i just saw that in chat that would be hilarious, yeah, that, would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be really good but we'll get there um how long did you actually have you like played the series Liz? Like Borderlands, I should say. Borderlands, you know, I was late to the game. I tweeted, I think, in like 2017, and I was like, oh my God, I'm playing Borderlands 2 for the first time. What's wrong with me? Why does it take me so long to get to the game? And and uh, Geek versus Nerd Cullen was like, was like, welcome. <laughs> 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 welcome. So cool. We have cookies. Yeah. And uh, so I started playing Borderlands 2 in 2017, um, made it all the way through one playthrough, and I started playing my second playthrough, and I was like, Slag, what? I didn't have anybody to help me play it, so I didn't really know how to do anything in the game, so I just was like, I'm going to go back and play other games now because I, I need help. And and I, I don't think I was really super good friends with uh, with you guys yet. Like, I mean, I was still friends with, you know, with the two of you, but not, like, as close as we are now, where I feel like I could, like, call you up if I had an issue, you know what I mean? Like, can well, you help me? I'm in the middle of... I don't know. Whatever. I can, I can ask you. You, for you just happen to break down in Jersey, and you know that I'm I'm relatively close by, and I'll come I, get you, like something yeah. like that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I ever had a problem, I know that I could call you guys. And like back then, we were friends, <laughs> but like it, I, I I didn't want to be like, hey Mitsu, hey Tess, do you want to play video game with me? But like now, I would. Always. <laughs> forever and always <laughs> but yeah i would love to go back and play a second playthrough of borderlands 2 um borderlands the other borderlands series so i played bef right before borderlands 3 came out professor broman was like hey have you ever played borderlands 1 before and i was like no and i really want to before borderlands 3 comes out and he was like let's do a playthrough so me pro bro she snaps i can't remember who the fourth person was uh but the four it's a it's four it's four players right yeah yeah, yeah. so it's there are four of us i can't remember the fourth person was but me probo she snaps somebody else uh all went through uh, a borderlands one playthrough it only took us two streams to do it i was actually really surprised at how fast the main story was yeah. we didn't do any side quests or anything yeah. we just went through and and did main story but uh that was really fun and interesting um end boss you know, no spoilers, but it was weird. <laughs> like, my, my just a weird experience. And everybody was just like, what did you think of the game? And I was like, I, it was great. I don't know. It was great and weird and interesting. And I don't know, very Borderlands-y. I just really liked it. I want to um, play through one again because I've only played it once. Uh, yeah, same. I would play with you again. I've only played through it one time, too. That would be cool. Because I, so I played two, like, a hundred bazillion bazillion times because two was like the i started I, so i started streaming playing something else and three days into my streaming career which was not meant to be a career it was literally just <laughs> a way to make more friends because i had just broken up with someone and i was like living alone and i had not just you know cat, that feel. But a different cat yeah and i was just like i just want to make more friends please um and my my other game friends that was an mmo that i played were like you should 
try streaming. You could talk to people and play single player games. And I was like, okay, somebody recommended a multiplayer game called Borderlands 2 three days into streaming. And I was like, ooh, this looks awesome. And then literally the rest is history because I got super addicted and played it all the time for like forever. Um, but anyway, I, I never played one because at the time one had uh, like uh, like the field of view and the motion blur. And also uh -huh. my computer was absolute poop at the time and could not handle it. And so like I just had issues and I couldn't play it. So the first time I ever played it was when they released the remastered version right before Borderlands 3. So... I want to play it again because I played once and I've liked it a lot, but I feel like, especially with the movie coming out and it focusing on like Lilith and Roland. And yeah. Like that'd be fun to do. I would love to do it with you. It would be super cool. Oh, that'd be great. We we should all do a playthrough together. Yeah. Uh, I would love to do that. I I want to, I want to, uh, I want to fight that last boss again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what what was the question you're asking me about uh, my Borderlands uh, How history? Long? Oh yeah, I mean we yeah. we're we're getting so off track with everything, <laughs> and I just real somebody in chat brought this up, and over on my desk, sitting on my desk, I'm actually going to do this because somebody was like, Liz, what are you talking about? You and Mister are so close. You're the best man at Mister's wedding, and then I was like, oh wait, that absolutely did happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> It sits on my desk every single day, and I see it every single day. My fucking my no hair chin. Was so short. Yeah. Like, Your hair oh, was so long. Was. I know. I, oh, man, yeah. it really was. It's getting that long again. But <laughs> I figured everybody would want to see that real quick. That's me. So, yes, so it was. Cute. That was a wonderful time. And that was um, great. Yeah. So that's the that's what yeah. that's what Borderlands brings to the table. That's I'm the kind of friendship man. that you it's you were. You were. Well, best woman, best man. I don't know. What what would you prefer? Woman, best woman. Best bust woman. Yes. Best woman. We'll go, well, yes. Woe man. Woe man. Best yes. Woe man. Whoa. Whoa, That's man. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna, we, we need to bust through these questions so we can yes, get we do. to, okay. we can get to the, Let's go the burning, like, yes. other questions. <laughs> we have so many questions. Oh, but um, I play Borderlands 3, too, as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, once or twice. I wonder. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's... Anyway, but anyway. <laughs> what, okay, so what first attracted you to the Borderlands, like, franchise? What got you interested? Um, I really like loot like a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And um, I keep talking about about Kagoth, but like he 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 has influenced a lot of the games that I've chosen over the years because he and I have a lot of the same taste in games. Um, uh, not exactly the same. Like he likes to play some roguelites that I'm not really into, but um, and and some Nintendo games that I'm not, I'm not I, I'm sorry I'm not a huge super huge Zelda fan. Like I didn't grow up with it, so like it wasn't really for me. Um, so I'm not like nostalgic about it, but, um, but like things like that are not really, um, in my wheelhouse, but he likes to play looter shooters. And I was like, well, this guy has a Borderlands themed, uh, picture on his YouTube and Borderlands com was his YouTube. And I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll check out Borderlands okay. because everybody likes, you know, if he likes the same games that I do, maybe I'll like Borderlands as well. And so, um, um, I decided to play Borderlands 2 on stream. I decided to stream it and uh, I was just like like you know those games where you get into it and you just don't look at chat at all and you can't stop playing the game? Yes. Like yes. that that was Borderlands 2 for me. I was so obsessed with that game. I was like I I have to stop playing this game because I, if I don't stop playing I won't stop playing. <laughs> it was so good. So um, it it quickly became one of my top five games of all time, Borderlands Two. Even though even though I only did the one playthrough and I never really got to end game, it was still it's still one of my top five games of all time, Borderlands Two. I love it. So, um, how did I get into it? Yeah, Kagoth. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I that, that sounds about right. I found out about Kagoth and Probro and Mitsu back when he was Mi Mitsurushi Reiji. Is that my, I'm <laughs> oh, oh, Hold up, we'll, we'll do it. it. We'll do it as uh, Goth would say. Go, Mitsurushi Reiji. Thank you. That <laughs> it was really awesome. Yeah, that's actually. what I knew him too. Yeah, mm. like I, I. I, it's funny because when I first met Mitsu, I don't think he had any idea, but I fangirled a little bit because I had watched him like, like you were one of the first people that I watched on Twitch. I don't think you know this. <laughs> um, I, 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 I actually don't think I do. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you know this, but you were because I, I started watching Borderlands people because literally I had been streaming for three days and somebody came into my stream and they were like, well, what do you like? And I was like, well, I've never really played first person games. 
but I played Portal and I liked that. And I really, you know, want to play more stuff like that that's kind of like funny and has a lot of personality and is first person. And like maybe if I could even play with people, that'd be cool because I love that about like the MMO that I've been playing for years, which was Eve. And anyway, uh, this, this one viewer I will never forget, his name was Buckwheat of all things. And he literally was like, you should play Borderlands 2. And I got super hooked. And then I started watching streamers that played it, and it was you and Goth and Probro, and that's like how it all began. And I just, I just thought the game was so cool, and you guys were so cool, and so it's, it's really funny that it's come full circle. It's like, but yeah. Anyway, um, that's a, that's all ancient history stuff. That is a conversation that we should have one day, where we should have a show where we have like Professor Broman and yeah. Goth and Liz on, and then the two of us, and we'll just talk about like what things were like way back in the day i'm talking like way way back in the day like when when everything was first going down that's that's a wild conversation now i think that's a that's a ben and Corey situation yeah, for situation. yeah i think you should have them on and oh, because awesome. like, that's pre me like i didn't stream i wasn't streaming when borderlands 2 first came out yeah that, uh, that I started streaming maybe like a year after it came out. Yeah, I didn't start streaming when it first came out. I think I started streaming when it had been out. So wait, hold on. Borderlands Two was out for seven or eight years before Borderlands Three. Seven years. Okay. So it's a seven year break. Yeah. So because I think you and me started around the same time, Liz. I think I started maybe just like a little time bit before you or something. I think you did. Yeah. yeah. Because I started streaming Borderlands 2 when it had been out for like a year, a year and a half or so, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so like it was just, it, I don't know, that it, it feels like another life. It yeah. feels like it, a whole different universe. Because yeah. <laughs> Twitch, okay, Twitch <laughs> is still the Wild West, but it was really the Wild West back then. <laughs> we we had no idea what we were doing back then. We um, still don't. <laughs> No, not even close. Not really. Uh, Liz, I'm going to ask you this question, even yeah. though I already know the answers to them. Yeah. Have you participated in any events? Maybe have you ever attended a convention, perhaps? I don't know. Yeah. What do you mean? Just like actual conventions or are we talking in-game events? Because both, well, yes. Well, we could, well, let's start with in-game events, because I think that's that's a, a fair question to ask. And then we can talk about events, because that's going to be another 20-minute conversation, I bet. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I did the Halloween event, I've done the Cartels event, I've done the Broken Hearts event. I played the Broken Hearts event one time, and I hadn't, I didn't save quit uh, when they were like, oh, it goes, it turns off at noon, and I was just like... I'm still farming hearts <laughs> and uh, and somebody was just like oh, why are you cheating in the game because it was like 12 30 and i was still getting the broken hearts and they were like you're you're gaming the system and i was just like i just haven't saved quit yet dude but uh but yeah so i i was just trying to farm and farm and farm but the cartels event i'm really sad the cartels event is gone and we can't i just wish cartels would be open and live all the time so we could always go get our opq system just like keep Definitely. leveling it up that would be great. I would. I just want that map to be open because it, it's kind of like a mini, like, I mean, because there's a boss at the end. It's like its own little mini event. And I, I don't know. I mean, the Halloween event, I know, is like a like a themed event that's like only for Halloween. And like, it's it's really interesting. It puts a new spin on everything. It puts a new spin on your build. The terror builds are super cool, which I use a terror build for so freaking long uh, last year. Um, but uh, well, yeah, when it first came out. Mm -hmm. But um but yeah, I just wish that I know the Broken Hearts event is for Valentine's Day, but like the Cartels event, it doesn't have like a doesn't have like a like a holiday. So like, why couldn't it just be live? You know. But anyway, um, I will. I was gonna say the 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 Halloween event for you in particular. Just remembering back in last year, yeah. must have been really special because you had a terror theme build back mm. at that point it was probably one of my favorite builds that i've ever seen over the course of uh any build that was ever made because you didn't if i recall correctly your terror build didn't actually use a legendary gun did it no 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 no. i use a purple gun i use a uh a, a double penetrating pneumatic bang stick yeah um which is the gun that i used for a long time uh on my flak because crit damage and all of that stuff so um, I could just destroy. I I I used to run Grave Ward and just and and just like decimate him with terror. It was amazing. It was like it was probably one of my favorite builds that I've ever done. So yeah. I wish I could do it again on level. 
That'd be super cool. Oh, maybe this year. Do you think they'll do it again? What revenge? Uh, no, not revenge of the cartels, but the okay. Halloween event. Oh well, I mean, they did the Halloween event prior, like that. That one already happened. I'm sure as it comes around to October again, they'll do yet another one this year. This year, so yes. I, I I can't see why not. They've they've recycled through the Halloween event already. They've recycled now through Broken Hearts. Yeah. Fingers crossed, they're going to recycle Cartels. through Revenge of the Cartels, and instead of making it go away, they just keep it forever. It what what you were saying is true. I think Revenge of the Cartels is perhaps. I, the one issue I think people have with takedowns is there's no respawn right by the boss, right? Mm -hmm. But you're still going through an entire area mm -hmm. and you're still fighting through waves of enemies, but you still get to the end. And when you get to the end, if you die, you just respawn, jump down and try the boss again. Yeah. So for for many out there, it's the most comfortable way of doing a takedown. It's a takedown that doesn't feel like a takedown. It feels like an entire event. But it's it's just like the best way that they could have gone about doing it. And mm -hmm. it's just got a really cool aesthetic. The music is wonderful. Um, and the, the rewards, the rewards are amazing. Everybody loves those rewards. Yep. Yeah. OPQ system. Fish slap. Fish slap. Everybody wants <laughs> oh to come back. Oh my Yellow god, cake. the fish slap. Who oh is using god. a fish slap? God. Think, Somebody TBJ. Who was it? TBJ Quag using fish slap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a crazy dude. Isn't that fish slap <laughs> only like a level 57 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was the most, I, it, it was, okay, so I'm, I might be getting confused. I, cause I've, I've edited multiple Ultimate Vault Hunter episodes in the last couple of days, actually. So, oh, yeah. so I'm a little, um, it was either TBJ, I think it was TBJ's build. I think it was Lovebot that used it. Uh, was it? I think, but it was, I think. I'm actually not 100 percent sure, but I think so. <laughs> triple says he uses his all the time, so maybe it was triple, and I'm wrong. It could have been triple. It could have been triple. Um, but yes, it's still level 57, and it's still super effective, which is amazing. Depending on the because it has mayhem with. scaling, right? The melee, yeah, the melee has mayhem scaling. Yeah, yeah. Moxie mm -hmm. says it's still the best grenade. Triple says he uses his all the time. People in chat are saying they use theirs all the time. Weasel, thank you. Um, it, it's just. Yeah, so I, I I know multiple people still use it in their builds in Ultimate Vault Hunter, which just speaks to the community overall using yeah. it all the time, uh, which is cool. So I'll, I'll leave you with one. Well, attend any conventions real quick. Oh, uh, well, if there are any conventions in the future, uh, I don't think that, I don't know if they're going to do a live GCX this year. If uh, I just don't think I just don't think with COVID it's going to be it's going to be possible. Not but, in time. But GCX uh, is probably my favorite convention because it's it's not it's big enough that it feels like a full convention, but it's small enough that I feel like I can I can see everybody and I can talk to everybody and get around and, you know, like meet everyone and talk mm -hmm. to everybody. Um, so plus the hosting stuff, you you know, when you and I do the hosting stuff together, I love tag teaming with you. It's really fun. So much fun. Um yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just I have a really good time at GCX. Um, if you guys don't know GCX, it used to be called Guardian Con or Destiny Con. Um, it happens in it. It did happen in Tampa for several several years, and now it happens in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hosted by the Rare Drop guys, which would be the same guys we've been talking about: King Italian, Professor Roman, Darkness Four Two Nine, K Magic One One, all those guys. Um, uh, and I think Lupo's now on the board too. Doctor Lupo's yes, on the board. Yes, I think he's he's. I, I don't think he takes a very like active role with a lot of things no. going on, but I know he he like threw down and and joined in to everything yeah. that they're up to. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So all those guys um, uh, do they they put on GCX every year. And last year, not last year. Oh God, last year. Two God, it ago. seems two years right? ago now. Yeah. Uh, when Borderlands Three was getting ready to come out, they got they got uh, Gearbox to bring. Uh, bring out a whole setup of like a bunch of computers for us to all play borderlands three on. And it was awesome. Yeah. It's it was really cool. Really, it was the first time I got to play the game. I think. Yeah. I think, yeah, That's I think it was the so first time I got to play the game. Cool. Oh, yeah. God. And that we, uh, we also did the, um, we had a, a big main stage kind of introduction where I think we were talking about oh, somebody's yeah. few skill trees with K six. Yes. With killer six. Who's, who's in chat right now. We, he, it, you know, it's funny. He holds up notepads every now and again, when he's on stream, the first time I ever saw him with a notepad was at that convention because he actually showed me all of the notes that he had. He had like four or five pages of notes of talking points and things that he wanted to make sure he had all of his information. Right. Oh, it was, it was out of this world. It was wild. It was so cool to say. 
Um, we, we have so many other questions. We'll have to have you back on for them. <laughs> yeah, um, why not? Because <laughs> yeah, because uh, we we're just oh my god, we're so pressed yeah, for time let, in a show that them. we'll do them quick. Do them quick. Okay, really, really quick. What type of streamer do you see yourself, or what kind of streamer do you see yourself as? I like to think like a super OP, like really good at video games type of streamer, but I think I'm a personality streamer. <laughs> People come to my stream because they think I'm weird and fun and I don't know, just like a crazy person who also plays video games and I don't know. I don't think people watch me because I'm really good at video games. I feel like I'm decent at them. So, you know, at least there's that, she but is I hold my own. quite good, Chad, just yeah. so you know. Don't, don't let her fool you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm decent at video games, but people come to me because of personality, so um, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. You think I'm cool? You, I don't know. If you think I'm cool, you're probably not cool because I'm not cool. And <laughs> she is Which cool makes us cool. Chad. Which makes me cool. Like, like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> right We're now, all nerds here. Guys, it's all good. Cool. Liz yes. literally carried us the first time in Guardian Takedown. Oh my god! Oh my right? god! I forgot about that. On Anathema. I remember oh. watching that. That was oh, so yeah, cool. True. That I got so him cool. down to like half half his shield, and I ran out of ammo, and I was like, "I'm gonna die." And it was only because <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a cut purse on me, unfortunately. But um, but anyway, okay. Next question. Let's go. And the last one is, and I, I imagine I know what the answer is going to be based on previous questions. Of course, we're gonna ask it anyway. Who were some of your streaming influences as you got started in the business? Oh, we know this answer to this question. I've already talked about it like 55 <laughs> bajillion times, uh, pun intended. Um, I, um, you know, interestingly enough, um, some of the, some of the, okay, so there are people that helped me along the way, and then there are people who influenced me. Mm. People who people who influenced me would be like Leela's chief. Her name now is just Leah. Oh, Leah. Uh, I, I, freaking love her and i love her stream she is a gem of a human being and just like a fantastic person uh just like irl um uh her, oh her her twitter name is leah viathan uh if you guys want to follow her she's super cool yeah um, like leviathan just leah yeah, viathan leah yeah. viathan and and missing kk she was a big influence on me when i first started streaming yeah. um she Lauren. was really big in the community and um she just taught me a lot of introduced me to a lot of friends and um yeah so same with leah um i think i think those two i just i and, and uh a uh, geek chick she's be she's get gamu now Icky. um a lot of a lot of these girls who else um geek and gamer girl she, i think she's just ggg girl or gg girl now um a lot of these girls at the beginning of streaming uh, really influenced me. Even even Kitty Place, she was one of she was one of the first people that I ever. Uh, she was literally the first person I ever followed on Twitch. Like if you scroll all the way down to my follow list, she's number one. So like I I took a lot of influence from other female streamers in the community and um, really tried to. This is creepy, but like really tried to study them and learn from them and like figure out like why they're successful and like what happens, you know, like in your stream and like, how do you do alerts? And like, you know, there was one time I was streaming and I was like, I can't figure out why I'm not able to go live. And I like, it was right when whispers came out and I was like, I whispered Miss Team KK and she was like, you can talk in my chat. It's okay. And I was like, I can't figure out why I can't go live. And she was just like, and she was really sweet and helped me while I was, while I was still learning the beginnings of streaming and stuff. So yeah, but still the people who, in, those are the people who influenced me. The people who helped me would be like Kay Goth, King Italian, Professor Borman. Um, they just like Datto, like all these people, if they hadn't helped support my stream at the very beginning, like uh, uh, even Triple Rec, um, uh, Real Crafty, all those guys raided my channel and helped me grow my channel at the very beginning. And if I didn't have them, like, I don't know that I would have gotten partnered so quickly. So. Mm. I think the community overall is so incredibly strong and positive and helps so much, but just as much your ability to stay consistent, like when they did that, like they, they brought people to you and you were there for those people in a consistent, yeah. high quality way, um, mm -hmm. being yourself and being your awesome self. And that, that's like a happy like a happy marriage of awesome things, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and that's rare in this industry. It's really hard. Like it's really, really hard. Even if you get support to stay consistent, I think staying, somebody asked about streaming in general and the industry and all of that um, on the streaming side of, of the entertainment industry, so to speak, I think the biggest, most important thing, honestly, is consistency. Um, everything else 
is also important. Having a personality or being really good at something or being informative or some combination of those things, you know, being interactive, uh, having good visuals, uh, having good audio, all of that stuff is important, right? Yeah. But just being consistent and having something of a draw and having that community support and staying consistent beyond the community support because it's not always going to be there as much as the community, whatever community, the Twitch community at large will love you um, and, and support you. you. You need to like show up on the days when you're not there still. And if you do that, then maybe things will work out. It's a very, it's very much like a, you get lucky and you, it is what you make of it kind of industry. And I think acting, at least from my very layman's sort of uh, extreme TV watcher, <laughs> TMZ reader when I was in my teens and et cetera, still. Um, <laughs> like, I, I used to, I used to fly a lot. I don't anymore, even before COVID. I kind of, mm. I used to travel a lot. So I'm like one of those really annoying old people that's like old and like tired of it which is horrible <laughs> who gets tired of traveling like i just i just want to get sick i just moved around too much as a kid that was it really so oh. anyway anyway though i was very lucky to have the experiences that i had and because i had those experiences i had a lot of opportunities to buy trashy magazines and learn way too many things about actors and actresses that probably weren't true <laughs> So anyway, um, from my perspective, the, the movie and TV industry is like crazy. It's crazier than streaming and streaming is the Wild West. Um, there's so much that goes into it. Like there's there's the beauty aspect of it. There's the uh, sort of who you know aspect of it. There's the money aspect of it, which I learned today that I definitely do not understand. I suspected that I didn't understand it, but today I learned for sure. <laughs> I do not understand what goes into it. Um, so, so Liz, who is an actual actress, remember <laughs> Elizabeth Olin on IMDb. You should go and follow her IMDb and check it out, and like go check out her movies and and you know go check out her Instagram, which is fifty five c c s c h b i f t y f i v e i cannot spell nice it. Yes. you got it that's good that's good <laughs> um you should follow her on all the places because she's amazing but also apparently nowadays it's like a thing if you have a social media following in another platform any of the platforms it helps your acting yeah. career that's yeah. really cool i didn't know that um and so how like how does casting for movies from your perspective from what you know actually work like for something like the Borderlands movie, for for an independent small movie, like if you were if you were just a filmmaker from Bumble Fudge Borderlands land <laughs> and you wanted to make a movie, like everything in the spectrum of that, how does that work? If you know. That is a really long answer that you're gonna get. <laughs> I will break it down real quick though. One, you need money. You gotta find money. That's the number one thing. Two in, sometimes in order to find the money, you need to find the right people. So you got to, the casting sometimes is how you get the money. Um, <clears throat> um, how else do they cast? I mean, sometimes casting directors will make a list of people that they want. And this is the interesting thing about casting. Sometimes a casting director will make a list of all the people that they want and say like, they've got a, they've got a list of like 10 people. They say like, I want one of these people to be, uh, be in the movie and they have castings on top of that to look for new talent so <clears throat> like i auditioned for a film one time to be in a film with helen mirren and i made it to uh like the top five they were like we really like her a lot we want her to be in it and then they cast some big actress <clears throat> so it's like you can't you can't really go by like just castings because it's not always just the casting. It's like, who can they get? And who will get the money? And who can they leverage? And who, you know, it's like, it's, it's all about your name. And like, and that's why social media is so important now. Because social media is a way for you to leverage your name. Oh, it's It sounds like a, you know what it, rem it reminds me of? It just reminds me of what we do. Mm -hmm. Like, quite literally. You, you go out there, you mm -hmm. build your brand. Like, I, I am Mitsu. You are 55. Mm -hmm. You're also Liz. We have, you know, Tessica. You are Tessica. 
you you're building this brand this image this name around yourself and eventually that's how you attract uh, video game companies to want to work with you on yeah. on our scale basically it's like oh hey we know uh tess does great work so we're gonna bring her on amd's official live stream and have her host this really cool thing like that's but that's the point like that's what you do you know it's it's and sometimes that doesn't work out that way sometimes they might look at it and say hey we put Tess on this short list but we really are kind of looking for like dr lupo here for this and it's not because Tess is bad it's just they're looking for the reach that lupo has versus the reach mm-hmm. that somebody else might have and that's okay too it's it, you know, it comes down to budgets. It comes down to, to like what Maybe audience you're trying to reach. Maybe they've only got a hundred bucks to spend on somebody. So they're not going to yep. get Lupo. You know no. what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> it just depends on, it depends on money. It depends on, on your reach. It depends, yep. it depends on a lot of things, a lot of factors and playing them off of each other is really important too. Okay. So, question yeah. that, that um, is sort of a, uh, an offshoot of this. Um, sure. How do you deal with, the comparison monsters slash the the whole like so it's very like I feel like the acting industry as much as the streaming industry in a lot of ways there's a lot of like objectification and a lot of competition and it's sure it's very hard to kind of not look at someone else and be like why do they have more than I do you know what I mean um well I learned very early on in the streaming so not in the streaming uh in the acting business is where it got ingrained in me that um you support your friends and you always support each other and the whole like rising tides raise all ships type thing is is has been something that i've always lived by and actually <laughs> i mean i keep mentioning him but k goth was the one who said that to me and and it makes sense and i and i've always and i've always supported like in my acting classes you know like we had this thing in my acting class where at the beginning of class if you had a win you could go up to the front of the, the front of the room and say like my win is i just got cast in a national commercial and it's gonna air on blah 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 and you know i'm really excited about it because they're gonna use me for five more commercials whatever you could say something really cool like that and the entire room erupts in applause and everybody's like super excited for you because you want to support each other so um, the thing I've always thought about, about, uh, streaming is like, like the, all the girls that I, I mentioned, those would be my direct competitors. Like those are people that I would compete with, but like, I never looked at it that way. I look at it as like, how can I one make friends with people who are similar to me to learn from them and figure out why their stuff works and like, what's going on with them that makes people want to go to their stream. And, you know, like there's nothing wrong with learning from someone. There's, there's everything wrong with comparing yourself and making yourself feel bad about yourself or uh, not being as good as somebody or why do people want to go see them and not me? You know, like, don't do that. Just figure out how you can make yourself better. That's a really, really, really awesome point. And that is why I, I knew you would answer this well, which is why I asked <laughs> it. Um, because I, I was curious if if acting was similar to streaming because I For super, sure. yeah. Absolutely. I super believe in that, like the whole, the rising tide lifts all boats thing. Because, yeah, that's what it lifts all boats, yeah. Yeah, it's super, super, super true in my experience. And like, I do feel like, there are people that don't think this way, but I think that hurts them more than it helps them. And I think honestly, just believing in your friends and helping your friends only helps you in general Mm -hmm. in this industry. And obviously it turns out others, I just have no real concept of the acting industry. So I was curious. It's just, it's, it's very much like, uh, it's very much like streaming in the fact that like you are your own brand and you have to sell yourself and like, you know, um, it's, it's kind of like a popularity contest, unfortunately. And that's just what it is. You just have to know that like, it's not a contest with each other. It's a contest with the casting people. Yeah. And you know, so it's a, you mentioned a, a rising tide raises all ships. I know Goth like to say that a lot. He mm-hmm. like to say it a lot, a lot. Uh, it's, it's kind of what the entire borderlands community is predicated on in terms yeah, of streaming. Sure. And it's what the borderlands content creation team is predicated on it's that we're all coming together not to to compete against each other necessarily but to to help out each other and lift each other up and like further advance and show what this community is made of um you know we we have our events the hunt is coming up and then sometimes tragedy strikes too i know unfortunately uh 
senior gearbox community manager in OL. She's going through a lot right now down in Texas with all the storms and, you know, uh, her apartment is mega flooded. And, and if there's something that we can do in the future, I know the entire team is there too. So yeah. like there's, there's a lot of different facets to what we're doing and why we're doing it. And it's just, it's just funny how similar acting, just like you said, is, is very similar to what we do in streaming. I say the same thing about wrestling too. It's the same way. It's, it's all so very similar. Yeah. Um, so this is really interesting stuff. Uh, let's, let's, let's break this down a little bit more now and, and, focus it back on the movie itself. What do you think of our, our established announced cast so far? So we have Eli Roth directing, just to recap everything, right? We have, uh, I forget his name, and I apologize for that, The but he, I know his his big claim to fame was he was the screenwriter for Chernobyl, which that's a big effing deal, because that was a great miniseries event. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. it Craig Mazin? I believe so, yes. Cra- Cra- yeah, Craig Mazin. That, I believe that's his name. Um, we have... Kate Blanchett as Lilith. We have Kevin Hart as Roland. We have Jack Black as Claptrap. And we have Jamie Lee Curtis as Tannis. So we have four actors announced. We have our director and we have our screenwriter. Based on what you know of those so far, what do you think of these casting choices? Um, I think Kate Blanchett is a great choice. In my opinion. Okay. Um, I think she's a real badass and she could play anything she wants ever. I mean, if you saw her in uh the Marvel movies like uh as Hella, like, oh my god. Oh yeah. She was just just commanding. She was so good. Um, I'm just a huge fan of Kate Blanchett. Jamie Lee Curtis. Um I'm interested to see if she can bring I, I see her I could see her as a little goofy, like I see Tannis as a little goofy. Um uh, and I guess I could see that. I'm just, I'm just concerned that it might be, it might be like out of her inner circle of casting. I just, um, like I said, I would love to see somebody like Anne Hathaway play Tannis. I was still um, pushing for Aubrey Plaza. I'm going to keep saying that forever and ever, even though it's already been cast. I thought she would have been great. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Aubrey Plaza. I think she's oh, kind of weird i don't know but that's the point that's 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 tannis tannis is just she's just this this weird ball of energy that you can't quite describe specifically you know yeah that's true i guess yeah Yeah. and Um, they look very similar too like i I, I I, I feel so bad but i don't know who this is i'm looking her up right now what is she oh well you haven't watched parked in the wreck so yeah yeah or yeah, safety not guaranteed. I, I think I talked. Did we talk about that on stream last week? We I don't did. know. We did. Yeah, a little bit. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that movie. Yeah, was I don't fun. know this. That's actress. a Liz movie. Liz, would you have you seen that movie? No. Safety not guaranteed. No. I know. I know. So uh, real quick, you're you're a purveyor of internet culture and stuff like that. Do you remember there used to be an image that was posted around all the time with a guy who looked like he was straight out of the '80s with a ridiculous blonde mullet, and he said, "I am looking for a companion for time travel." Safety is not guaranteed. I have done this once before. No, this is this is a. Re- it was like a. It was like a, in the newspaper, a real clipping that somebody took out, and it just it was all over the internet. It's a wild time, and and somebody took that one clipping and made an entire movie out of it, starring Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, it's. I know. I know. You and I. We've talked uh, off off. Uh, in, in pre-show and post-shows for things about liking like bad movies or like good bad movies and things like that. So that's that's one of those movies that you would definitely want to check out. Um, oh, it's got the guy from New Girl in it. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay, I like him. So yeah, that's you, you watch that and you you can kind of get a little bit more of a sense of what she's about and and, and why she might fit for that. Um, but yeah, I, Anne Hathaway, I didn't even consider that. That's that's a wonderful choice. Maybe I should be in casting and not acting. <laughs> okay, no. dos. That's true. Why not? Why not both? Why not both? Yeah, lots, hey. of, lots of Hollywood people do multiple things, right? Because like I get that it's like you you start out doing one thing, right, and then you realize maybe maybe you're also good at another thing, or maybe something else interests you. And like I feel like you evolve as a creator, and yeah. actors are creators, even though they may be you know, taking on a role that was created for them or was just created that they're stepping into and they have to learn that character. No matter what, you bring something of yourself to that character, right? So, 
like the way your take on that character and your presentation of that character is creative in so many ways and mm -hmm. like acting is so interesting to me because it, it involves so many different things you're taking on someone else's vision someone else's uh sort of like person you know they make a person to be in a show and and go through certain things and you have to embody that but mm -hmm. you embody that in every way physically mentally emotionally visually like in all the ways that people see and the way you do that is such a level of creativity and also knowledge because you have to learn a whole bunch of lines like that's 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 the thing that streamers don't do right we don't learn lines we just talk at you guys a lot yes. <laughs> we, res we read chat we respond to chat um even when we do pre-recorded stuff the best so the best pre-recorded stuff in my opinion is stuff that's just kind of done right the first time and then requires very little actual edits um and that's what we do for ultimate vault hunter like i do edit ultimate vault hunter but there's not a lot of editing that i need to do for these awesome people um and for the entire team and all the creators that we bring on and it's really nice to kind of showcase them um but it's not the same thing at all as like learning lines that's a whole mm -hmm. different specter of of knowledge and skill it's a completely different skill to what we do now and i just think it's really cool that you know how to do that and have done that before and mm -hmm. um i'm sure that they have chosen actors for this movie both to sell the movie and because they think that these actors will do a good job like jamie lee curtis yes she might be older but I mean, she's done so many incredible things. And so, like, maybe I wouldn't have thought of her because we think of Tannis as younger in the first place. But first of all, we don't know how old she's actually going to be in the movie. They can do Yeah, we don't know when they want to set Borderlands either. Yeah, we know nothing yeah. about the story. We don't know anything we don't about know the story. story. So, like, it could maybe be Maybe it's advanced. Maybe yeah. it's after. Maybe it takes place after Borderlands 3. We don't know. Yeah. Like, that would actually... Okay, so it would be kind of cool if it was earlier... But in my opinion, it would be a lot more interesting to actual fans of the Borderlands universe and the Borderlands franchise. Actually, I hadn't thought about this, but it would be much more interesting to me personally and those people, I think, if it was set later, like way mm -hmm. later, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe it's been 30 years since what's happened in, in Borderlands 3, you know, and Tannis, who's much older now, is still searching for uh, Lilith. And then she finds her. And mm. then Lilith hasn't actually aged. Or maybe she's only aged a little bit because she's been in some kind of crazy time. Stasis weirdness. Yeah. yeah. Like, how freaking cool would that be? And maybe she somehow found Roland there. Or maybe we only see him in flashbacks. We have no idea what the script is. I'm purely speculating right now. But uh, that Roland. would be cool. <laughs> Roland. I wish Don Cheadle was Roland. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I yeah. I I could see that. That's great. Yeah, that's that's my casting choice for Roland. Don I mean, Cheadle. Yeah. Okay, so so this is a question that I wanted to ask earlier, and and I think I sort of said it somewhere, either in the pre-show or the main start of the show. But anyway, I I don't understand why people get upset with casting choices unless the person has done something horrible. Like if the person has done something awful or said something awful, just in like like they're horribly racist or something obviously that's terrible and they shouldn't have a job um, right. they shouldn't have a platform right right, um, right right that's one thing but like if the person is a totally like normal human being <laughs> um that is professional and good at their job and maybe they've never done this kind of acting before and maybe they don't look exactly like the character but they're an actor. Like an actor's mm -hmm. job is basically to be a chameleon and to embody a character that is not themselves. Yeah. Right? Yes. So like when you act, you're learning lines and you're showing emotions that you're not feeling yourself. Right. Right. Sure. Or at least that's the theory. Um, right. So like, like why would people get mad if someone who's like, say a comedian that, maybe has never done a serious role before it gets chosen for a role that 
they could potentially do a really good job with. We just don't know because we've never seen them do something like that before. You know, why are people? I don't know, the same mad? way people got mad at Jim Carrey when he when he did Eternal Sunshine. You know, like yeah, like I know that people. Okay, so I think I've talked about this a little bit before, and it's very silly. But Rob and I watch my my partner boyfriend whatever. Um, we watch way too much TV, and we mostly watch like like silly crime shows, like things like The Mentalist and White Collar and every other crime show, Bones, all of that. Um, there's just a few that I'm thinking of. And they're all the same. <laughs> and they all cast Law & Order. They literally all cast the same freaking people for the same freaking jobs. And everybody is typecast. <laughs> and it's like, like we were, we were watching MacGyver or something. and, and or, or not Hawaii Five-0, but the other one is in Hawaii. Uh, Miami Vice? No, there's another one. That's Miami. Mi uh, Miami Vice is yeah. number one new well, show. Well, there's another one about Burn Notice. Is my, they're all, there's like a million shows. Oh, well, anyway, Burn Notice is good. Yeah. But, but the same people get picked for the same roles in all of them. Like, there's always like a, like a dirty cop that's kind of like harsh but good at her job. And there's always like a, a, a fat detective that's like kind of jaded and whatever but he's ultimately a good guy like it's all the same people and also it's really funny to me like they always choose the same three russian bad guys i literally like literally they must call the agency and be like i need the three russian bad guys <laughs> and the three <laughs> russian bad guys show up it's really funny people get typecast so much it's mm -hmm. crazy that goes back into what liz was talking about about lists you have that list that yeah. you know that's that reliable list for your casting choices and then maybe you'll go and look for other people like Liz was talking about before where you see all right well here's some of the up-and-coming people we're not going to use them but we want to at least have them come in here and see a role maybe we can bring them in for another project or something like that but yeah mm -hmm. we're definitely going with uh, Viggo Mortensen if we're going to go with a bit like scary Russian guy for a little while Mads Mikkelsen Mads Mikkelsen Whoa. oh the other but one like, yes but like the, the fact of the matter is just because someone is good at one thing doesn't mean they're not also good at something else especially mm -hmm. actors like you're the whole job of being an actor even more so than being a streamer by, by mm -hmm. a lot is to be able to embody people that are not you right acting inherently is you're acting like someone else right mm -hmm. like your life is not the life of the character so you are right. being someone else so if somebody that is more um familiar with comedic stuff for instance uh, is asked to do a more serious role in a movie that probably is going to have a fair number of comedic moments. That actually makes a lot of sense to me. And I don't understand why people get mad because like, like look at uh, Jamie Foxx, who was super comedic, but has done some really, really awesome serious roles or uh, like Will Smith, who started out being a, a sitcom actor, who's done some incredible serious comedic roles uh, I'm sorry, serious, like dramatic roles who started out doing more comedic stuff. And and like people people can transcend their typecasting so much in the industry. And I don't understand why fans don't give them that chance. I understand why like the the money people necessarily may not want to take a chance, right? I understand why the people paying for the movie to be successful and investing yeah in the movie to be successful are more risk averse so to speak right. i totally get that i don't get the fans i mean are like, fandoms are a fickle thing you know i just don't That's, get it's it it's very true so well okay it, i know you do you i know like like the front of your brain is like i don't get it but we've had so many conversations that are so similar that when i say this you're gonna be like okay i get it it's passion that's all it is like why do people get so riled up when their favorite gun gets nerfed in a video game and then they go, why did Gearbox nerf this? It's passion. They, they, they hold on to certain things because they're excited about them because they feel a connection to them and they, they, want, they feel like they're part of the active part of the process even if they're not necessarily part of the active process. So when they get let down, we can even use yesterday's Nintendo Direct for example. We got some things that we were really looking forward to. I got Mario Golf, we got Tales from the Borderlands coming to Switch, there are tons of cool other things that were there, but there were a lot of people who were like, this is a big letdown, we were really hoping for more from Nintendo, and it's just passion. You, you build these things up in your head 
because you you expect so much of them and then when somebody's like well we're gonna go in this direction it's not the direction you were thinking of so immediately you kind of like reject it out of hand just because you already in your heart you believe that it was the right thing to do and it's really hard to shake a belief an idea can be changed an idea is mutable a belief that's a completely different ball game to get somebody to believe in a project like the borderlands project which is unproven untested right now that they're making these right calls people don't know that's, I mean, I, that's why they're like that i get that but like i love borderlands so much you know so much like like literally my as my favorite I, I look like her because i admire her and i love her as one of the most favorite characters in fiction in books movies tv shows video games everything right so like i believe in gearbox i believe in their vision i believe in all this stuff i i mean you and i and liz and everybody on the team and everybody in the directory on twitch and on youtube and on facebook and on steam watching right now everybody believes in this franchise to a to a degree right um and loves it and we have passion for it Right. But, like, I, I don't understand why people wouldn't, like, like they have a vision of maybe a specific actor being in a role. But, like, like all of the actors chosen so far and all of the people chosen so far overall are professional, qualified uh, people that have had a lot of experience. And, honestly, I like, this is a thing. I don't know if you've ever done, like, comedic stuff in the acting sphere Liz but I know you from your stream and you definitely <laughs> have a really good sense of comedic timing right Wait. which I do I, I know you do and I feel like that's actually really hard to get right on television and in movies it's actually one of the most difficult things to actually be funny and have that timing down and even if you have the lines written for you well by the writers like to get that right and have it come across as genuine is incredibly difficult, I think, yeah. whether you do it on stream or you do it on TV and movies and whatever. And I think if you can do that well, you can do drama well. I feel like drama is easier. It is. It really is. Comedy's hard. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Comedy's I, hard. I dude. feel like comedy is way harder than drama. Yeah. Comedy and requires very specific, precise timing. It requires, you know, a very efficient delivery system to get out that particular joke at that particular moment it's being being funny is hard that's that's what that boils down to yeah, like i don't um, know how to do that <laughs> i mean sometimes it works out i try a lot it's like one of those things like where me personally i just throw out a lot of things and sometimes one thing is like oh okay but it's like one of Five bazillion things. Shotgun comedy. <laughs> yeah. Shotgun comedy. Oh. Shotgun speaking comedy. Of, speaking of comedians, can I bring up Jack Black? Yes. Absolutely. Thank, thank yes, I, please. Look, I think Jack Black is going to do a really good job as Claptrap. Not who I expected. I, if I were to recast, I would choose Bradley Cooper. Really? And, like Rocky <laughs> Raccoon Bradley Cooper? Imagine him as Rocky Raccoon. Imagine him as Rocket. Okay. And like, think about the voice. I would like to hear a voice similar to that as Claptrap. I hear it. I'm, you, I'm, I'm like in my head trying to replay. I'm just adding like the 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 auto tune to it because mm -hmm. Claptrap, you know, has the the slightly robotic too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You could you could absolutely do that as Bradley Cooper. Um, but I'm still interested to see what Jack Black's going to do because I love him and I think he's hilarious. And Claptrap is all about uh, being goofy and silly and weird and it's like and super yeah, full of himself. That's Jack Black. And Jack Black already has an established history with the Borderlands universe because he was hanging out with Killer Six at E3 2019. Like, how cool is oh. that? Yeah. Hey, Six, you're so famous. Oh, my God. You guys ever heard of that famous guy, Killer Six? He's best friends with Jack Black now. That's super cool. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, different opportunities for that as well. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're so pressed for time. We, we ran way over. But there are a few, a few like quick hits I want to get out here. And I'm watching, I'm currently watching both the Twitch chat and YouTube chat. By the way, I've been watching you guys the whole time in case you guys thought you were going to sneak it in there. I have seen every single comment today. Um, we have four major roles filled, but we still have plenty more people who could be involved or are involved, at least in what we think the story will be. Who could be Commandant Steel? 
for example. I know I, I if I recall correctly, Killer Six made mention of somebody's name last week. Forget who it was, but you're looking for like somebody a little bit older can pull off the tattoos. Um, it has away again. I don't know. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? Right. Oh, uh, still. God, I, I don't know. Um, Somebody suggested Tilda Swinton. I'm not. Ooh, I'm not opposed to that. I'm that not opposed cool. to that at all. That's oh, a really good choice. Oh my god, that could yeah. be cool. Angelina Jolie would actually also be cool. I really? Oh, well, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Do you remember? God, what was the movie where she had the white hair? Fudge. She's done so many movies that I've seen that I've loved. Uh, Angelina Jolie. Well, pff, yeah. I don't remember. There was a movie where she had white hair and it was like braids. It was. It was like come down steel ish kind of. Salt. No, it wasn't salt. Was it wanted? No, I don't think it was wanted. Wanted, she had dark. Wait, salt, she had black hair. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember. But she had white hair with braids in one of the movies. It was awesome. I mean, she can pull off anything. Some people can I mean, just pull she's, off anything. she was definitely badass siren material. Like, yeah. I can see her making a great common Don Steel. It's, it's yeah. Tilda Swinton. It's not a winner. Yeah, <laughs> you think Tilda, you think Tilda Swinton, Swinton. Tilda Swinton yeah. is uh, an excellent choice for that, especially with the current cast lineup. Gone that we in have. sixty seconds. That was it. Thank you. Yes. Oh, that was Gone in sixty seconds. Yes. Oh, that's an old movie. Yeah, oh, it's movie. old, but it's so good. And she, so she was like a mechanic, uh, for race cars and stuff like that, and was one of the thieves and stuff. One of the old school crew for uh, Nicolas Cage. And she yeah, had that say, white... We're circling back to Nicolas Cage. Like yeah. The beginning <laughs> yeah. Of the show. She oh. had the white hair and the dreads and the, the braids and stuff. And like, I just feel like she would make a badass siren no matter what siren outfit you put her in. But that would be a good one. Mm -hmm. Yvonne Strahovski would be freaking amazing in any role. Oh, ever. chat also says Brie Larson. Brie Larson. That's not a bad one. I like Amelia Clark. I could see Amelia Clark going in there. Amelia Clark. That's a good choice. That's a real good choice. Yeah. All right. So coming down steel. We're, we're almost to the one everybody wants to talk about. It's after this one, I promise, because I'm setting up for it. <laughs> Mordecai. Who could be Mordecai? I, I said Keanu. Somebody pointed out to me that even though, like because I said Keanu and somebody like you could have Keanu just be in his own movie and every role is Keanu. And that's the best movie ever. <laughs> Dude, just throw him wherever. It's Keanu I want to watch the Matrix again. <laughs> yeah, oh, oof, John Wick. Or that, or yeah. and that, <laughs> and and that, yeah, and that, yeah. I don't know that I have an idea for Mordecai. Yeah, that, that that's a tough. difficult one. That one's tough. I like you. Like I, I, and again, we're not necessarily going by the the build. But when I see Mordecai, I see somebody who's tall, like lanky, uh, somebody who's very dry, sarcastic wit. Again, like Keanu Reeves can pull off based on previous experiences with some of his acting roles. Somebody who obviously knows how to handle firearms, which Keanu literally takes weapons training for his roles in uh, uh, John Wick, for example. What about Oscar Isaac? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, I'm in. I'm in. I like that idea a lot. That's that's yeah. real good. So Please for those of you who don't know, know Isaac is, is uh, Poe Dameron from uh, the sequel trilogy of Star Wars, among other things, among other things. Yeah, uh, that's really a good one. Uh, somebody suggesting Pedro Pascal. Sure. Why not? You can just throw him oh, in anywhere anymore. Uh, don't Liz, love. calm down. <laughs> I shouldn't if, have said it. I, I you realized can't that. say his name I know. around me. I know. That was my bad. <laughs> Liz, Liz wants to go on a first date with Pedro because I want to go crazy. on many dates with Pedro Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute it's so cute seriously okay. don't mention him there's, there's, a tweet. Name. there's a very cute tweet out there somewhere just saying i had to delete it because i'm scared of dmcas no! Twitter right now. oh my goodness oh i'm yeah, so sad it was, about that it was sweet and then and then somebody somebody on twitter i think loco was like you gotta you gotta was delete all music your music in that yeah it was it it's a it's DMCA free for Twitch, but not for Twitter. Wait, does that not, is that not all in, wait. It's royalty free music specifically for Twitch. It's not royalty free for like YouTube or Twitter or whatnot. So like I can't, the, uh, the music that I use. 
What a, what a okay, I'm going to have to ask you about that because now I'm confused. Yeah. I would assume that something is, is if it's something, okay, so. It's, 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 it's been, I think the, I think the license is for Twitch. It's not for like any other platform. So that's what I was told. Anyway. That no idea. is ridiculous and yeah. upsetting. So I was just scared. I was scared. I didn't know. I don't want to. I don't want to get my Twitter, you know, suspended indefinitely because of one tweet. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. sure if he has seen it, it's already passed through his mentions. So delete is fine. Whatever. Yeah. No. No. It's totally fine. I'm just okay. This is totally unrelated to Borderlands, so I won't get too into it. But the whole DMCA thing is ridiculous and scary, and I worry about it a lot. Um, yeah. And the fact that something can, I, I feel like if something is, because because the reality is for all of us that are creators of content on any platform, uh, whether you started on TikTok or Instagram or Twitch or Twitter or YouTube, it doesn't matter. The reality is we all have to spread out to other platforms, mm -hmm. right? If we stick to just one individual platform, we're hurting and hobbling ourselves uh, in the short term and potentially wrecking ourselves in the long term because if something happens on one platform and we don't have anything set up on another platform, we don't have a leg to stand on if we get screwed over, right? So I feel like if, if, a, if a music uh, provider that says they are safe for X platform says they're safe for X platform, they should also make sure they are safe for Y platform and Z platform and ABC platform, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like they should make it clear that they are safe for all platforms because we as content creators have no choice but to exist on multiple platforms. And trying to police like what's safe for one and what's safe for another and all of that is just totally ridiculous. Yeah. Sure. So that's Ooh. that's a whole so messy a, legal argument for for completely an entire podcast. Oh yeah, that. that's yeah. all. I have another Mordecai casting choice. Listening. Ooh. A more perfect Mordecai casting choice. Ooh. He played Hector on Westworld. His name is Rod Rodrigo Santoro. Not familiar with them. Mm. Uh, Why? Well, I, I will watch Westworld to see if I can. You have not seen. I have not I, seen Westworld. Okay, so I've only seen a little bit. Uh, so so okay. To total side note, but Rodrigo, what's what's the last name? Santoro. Rodrigo Santoro. Okay. Um, I he plays Hector. Oh, okay, okay. I remember this guy. Hector's the bad. He's he's the bad guy, but he turns good. Yeah. So I saw Spoilers. like most of the first season. It was really good, but it was it it was like like this happens to me a lot with TV shows because I binge them and I watch. Mm -hmm. He's in like the very first episode. Yeah, but like I watch a whole lot of it and then it becomes too much very quickly and I have to like take a break. <laughs> so yeah. I took a break from Westworld and I never went back after like four or five episodes. But I remember he was, him. He was cool. He's, uh, he's amazing, and I think he, oh my god, I think he'd make a great Mordecai. So. That brings us to the next one. Okay. The big one that everybody's going to have an opinion on. It's almost going to be universally the same. Let's just get it over with. Who plays Brick? The Rock! <laughs> it's The Rock. It's, it's, it's the absolutely rock. Dwayne Johnson. We it's 200% uh, Dwayne. It's you, gotta be The Rock. You can't bring Kevin Hart into a movie like this and not also have The Rock involved in some way. Does I not do think happen. that would be cool to have them. Doesn't happen. I super I just, agree. Is, is there anybody else? I see some people are lobbying for Dave Batista. Batista's is not a bad idea either. I, I Batista's a little bit more of a bulldog as opposed to like the, the rock who's like a great Dane and like Brick is like a great Dane. I'm, I'm comparing everybody to dogs now if we're going to do that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> sure. And What's so Kevin like, Hart. <laughs> uh, Kevin Hart is uh, a papillon. Papillon. Pa Papillon. Pa Papillon. Pa that's how you pronounce it. I don't Papillon. Know. Papillon. <laughs> and then yes, that's 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 Kevin Hart. Um, so like, 
like brick brick is just like he's just this giant mountain muscle guy and like the rock is what six three six four Ugh, like he's just like these days especially he, he's he's more jacked now than when he was in the ring as the rock it boggles my mind the dude is he's six five huge. he's six five that sounds about right all right so yeah he's i mean that's brick that's he's gotta that's play so. him he's got to I, I, I honestly can't see anybody else who could better encompass the role of Brick at this point. Uh, and, and for me, it would be really funny if they do have Kevin Hart play a serious character as opposed to The Rock, who's going to be playing this off the wall. But I saw Central Intelligence actually for the first time last night and didn't realize like The Rock is off the wall in that movie and Kevin Hart's kind of serious. Like he's because it the I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, but like. Kevin Hart's just this dude who's just like an accountant just trying to make his way in the world and The Rock is playing a CIA agent who's trying to yeah. solve this whole like mystery plot and The Rock is just out there and Kevin Hart just keeps it grounded. This and you know is, if you have that back and forth between the two of them then it would work. It would be awesome and I think it would be a good thing and I just yeah like I feel like I feel like so many people are angry about this and so many people are apprehensive about this and like apprehensive is better than angry. Um, the people that are angry, I'm just like, why are you angry? That's not fair. Um, the people that are apprehensive, I understand because it's something that's so far outside his established wheelhouse. But like, look at, uh, look at, oh God, what was his name? Hold on. Um, the, the Riddler. Uh, which Riddler? The one that passed away. There was a Riddler that passed Not away. The Riddler, the Joker, Heath Ledger, the Joker. Oh, Heath Joker. Ledger. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. My brain is done for forever. Literally, <laughs> I, I've, so I, I don't know what's been going on with my brain for the last couple weeks. Anyway, um, the Joker. So, <laughs> let's say his name again. Heath Ledger. Heath, Heath Ledger. Ledger. Okay, Heath yeah. Ledger was in a movie called A Knight's Tale. Yes, I love okay. that movie. I Dude. love that movie too. Keira Knightley's in it. It's so cute and funny and ridiculous and like nobody knows this but he started out as a comedy man he was a comedy actor he was comedic mm -hmm. in a bunch of different movies he did that one with oh this other girl oh my god uh the teen movie what was the, the... 10 things i hate about you thank Not you yes oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you liz 10 things i hate Julia about Stiles. you yes thank you her <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you are you and my brain God, get Julia along, Stiles. getting along better than oh, now we're me and my brain. Movie, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, like okay, so Heath Ledger played in Ten Things I Hate About You with Julia Stiles, and also uh, A Knight's Tale with Keira Knightley, and that's like how a bunch of them got their starts. He was a comedic timing star. He did such a good job with all of that, um, and and then he did like crazy drama. And and took it so seriously and things got really dark and went to a really bad place. But he did a really, really good job with that, too. Right. I, I mean, I genuinely think that comedy is actually much more difficult than drama. Um, now, drama is easy to overplay. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But comedy, understanding timing and understanding what makes people smile and laugh and the timing of that and. Just doing that correctly it's so hard it's so hard to do that on a set like you guys see little you know rectangular windows of our locations sometimes you just see us in front of a cool background right and and you know maybe there's a game and we're doing funny things in the game and interacting with it and like a funny thing happens um actors they don't have any of that you, I mean, you see everything about them as edited by an editor, but still, like, they have to interact with other actors and they have to understand sort of the jokes that they are, their writers have written for them and they have to express them in a way that makes sense. And people that are comedians don't even have writers. They just make their own stuff up, right? And that is that takes a level of creativity and understanding of the human condition and... And just skill that I don't even understand. And I feel like that is so much harder than drama. And the people that are angry 
and upset and and like worried about Kevin Hart as a comedian doing a serious role. First of all, I think that he could absolutely do a serious role. I think anybody that does comedy can do a serious role, probably better than somebody that can't do comedy, but can do drama. Um, but I also think Borderlands is, at its core, a hopeful, funny thing, right? It, it, there's a lot of humor in Borderlands. So I feel like he's a good choice. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's my take. So on <clears throat> we're going to, we're way, and I mean, extremely way. Like an over hour time. over. Like an hour of what that's okay. <laughs> Just, I got to uh, go. Some we're we're going to break down the fourth wall real quick. Cause that's what I like to do sometimes here. This is what it's like when we're filming ultimate vault hunters. This is just us basically doing a like a, a post show or pre show of Ultimate Vault Hunters. This is what we do. Sometimes we won't get started yeah. for an hour because we're just talking and just talking and talking and talking. Sorry, it gets bad. <laughs> um, we but love there's there's each one other. more name. I doubt he's going to be in this movie, but there's one more name that I wanted to put out there because everybody talks about it. Who would make a good handsome Jack? Ryan Reynolds. I agreed. Had a feeling that's that's the usual go to. It was there anybody else on that list though? Since apparently there are casting lists. Um, I don't remember who else chat mentioned. Chat mentioned somebody else, but I can't remember who it was. Chat, do you have any suggestions? Because I can't remember. Hey, Damien Clark. Help? Yeah, Damien Clark should Clark. actually be the one to do it. But I mean, since we I don't think that's actually going to happen. We'll have to figure it out. Sam Rockwell. Some people have been saying Sam Rockwell recently as well for Handsome Jack. I've noticed that name bandied around a lot. I'm down for that. Hugh Laurie? No way. Hugh Laurie? I mean, it's gotta be. It's gotta be Ryan Reynolds. It's gotta be Ryan Reynolds. I feel like he, Ryan Reynolds. I think, I think it's like he is. Be... He is Deadpool. I think he is Handsome Jack. That's yeah. the thing. I, yeah. I think there's no other choice for me than Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Timothy Oliphant. That's not a bad choice either. He's he's not handsome. And, I know. Handsome, it's, but it's, he's he's rugged handsome. He's, he's, he's not he's, handsome handsome. Ryan Reynolds is handsome handsome. Uh, Rob, Cage. God damn it. No, you know what we're. Do you I know mean, what the game we're playing now is? Be, it's we're yeah. we're naming people for Liz to shoot them down. That's, oh we're, that's, that's how we end this one. Michael Fassbender. How about that one? Uh, I can't remember what he looks like. Yeah, Michael Fassbender. Uh, did you see Days of Future Past? He was Magneto. No, not no, him. no, no, not him. No, uh, John Hamm. Chris Pine as Handsome Jack. Chris no, Pine? Not Chris Pine? No. I, I like the okay, spirit. I actually he could be a think young Handsome Jack. Yeah. Like, like, like a... Like a yeah. I think they'd have to like age him up a little bit, but I do think he could pull it off. Tom He's Cruise is Handsome Jack, YouTube is suggesting right now. Tom Cruise is... No. Tom Cruise isn't funny. No. It, he well, can be. That wit. Can you be. need that humor, that bite, that yes. like, that, like yeah. sting and like... Like Ryan Reynolds has that. He's yeah, got the, he's got yeah. the, mm, the, you know, that snake bite. And, and we're talking like about Tom like bankable Cruise stars. Great, like Who's a more bankable star? Too evil. Yeah. Like he, he's really good. Okay. So he's really good at being a good guy in a lot of movies. He's like an action star, blah, blah, blah. But like he would, I mean, I don't know. Handsome Jack is kind of evil. So me, he I'm is not evil, I'm not, of course, but like but, Deadpool yeah. is not perfect. But what you have sure. to remember is Handsome Jack thinks he's the hero. Mm -hmm. That's the the whole point of Handsome Jack is he thinks he believes that he's doing the right thing. He's also doing it because he wants billions of dollars. But if you remember in the pre sequel, he's like wholeheartedly convinced that all of us are bandits and that we're the bad guys. And he's trying to sanitize the planet to make Pandora a better place. That's what he believes in his heart. And so if Ryan Reynolds is great at playing good guys, he thinks he's the good guy. He could still do it. Based on that premise. Yeah, so could Tom Cruise even... Th that would be weird, but, like, honestly, I feel like you could probably pull it off. I don't know. I don't know. It's so uh, fun to speculate. Uh, Zac Efron <laughs> was a choice. That, David you know what? I could do Zac Efron. I could do that. Yeah. That's fair. Maybe. I maybe. could see that. He's he's. I've seen him in some comedies. He's funny. And he's very handsome. I could see it. I think, uh, you know what, it, uh, the other thing it has to be, you have to find an actor who's willing to <gasps> wear a mask of themselves for the entire movie. What about Dane Cook? <laughs> oh, what? Where are you going to dig him out from under? 
What has he even been up to for what 15 about years? about Dane Cook? Oh my, oh my I'm God. not disagreeing with you. I'm just wondering what like trash pile you're going to find him from. I don't know oh if God. he's handsome enough. He's definitely he's sarcastic handsome, enough. Man. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever Definitely see waiting? He's, a, I mean, no. he's in it for like ten seconds, but like he's still good in that. Oh Robert my God. Downey Jr. could do it. Robert Downey Jr. It. Yeah, he could. Super he could do, do it. it. That would he's be great. funny and and got that bite. Yeah. I, oh my God, I, he'd be great. He'd be awesome. I don't know if I'm hundred percent sold. He'd have to shave. He could do it. He, I mean, he could. Uh, he could do it, but like, I, I would he do it? You know, he could do it. Man, Robert Downey Jr. would actually oh, be amazing. What about Rob McElhenney, that guy from uh, oh, It's from, Always Sunny? Uh, Always Sunny, yeah. Well, mm. Do you think no. he's handsome enough? Uh, no, he, he's a handsome man, Mr. Garrison, but like... Is he funny? He's funny enough. <sighs> well, he's funny, but I, I don't... <laughs> if we're going for somebody who doesn't look quite as Jack-ish as Jack, and we were still like letting him in, then yes, Rob McElhenney would be a great choice. Um, but... I, like we say Ryan Reynolds or like Benedict Cumberbatch that he like Rob Rob is a little bit more stocky and like Benedict Cumberbatch or somebody like that. They're like lanky. And Jack is like he's he's a straw man. He's like a lanky dude. Yeah. You know? Joel McHale. Joel McHale. No, I hate Joel McHale. You don't like Joel McHale? No way. What? Does that mean you didn't like community? Are you going to break my heart live on stream? Are you going to do that? Um, didn't he did it? Uh, this is going to be controversial. I'm not sure if this is true or not. Did he? Didn't he have some like personal issues, like with his girlfriend? That like I, I don't know anything about that. But I if that I was actually remember. true, that would be a completely different conversation, and then I would be not okay with that. But that's a yeah. I'm not sure if it was Joe McHale or if I'm thinking of somebody else who also <clears throat> played another character that I'm. It, it, they look very similar, and I might hmm. be thinking of somebody else. It's Cillian possible. Murphy. Cillian Murphy's not a bad choice. That's uh, Scarecrow from Batman Begins. And I guess all the way through, too, technically. If you Ooh, wanna... Cillian Murphy. I don't know. Yeah. He, he, I think Dr. he's a fantastic Duncan. actor, but he's a little creepy. He's got, he's okay. got a creep, he's got a creep vibe. And Henry Cavill creep for vibe. Jack? He's That's too brave. jacked. Yeah. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's too, too jacked. He's too, too jacked to play yeah. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't Joel McHale. Okay, I'm thinking of somebody else then. I can't remember who I'm thinking of, no. but. That's a good one. Andy Samberg. No, no. Handsome Jack. A little too squirrely for you? Yeah. Okay, I, I knew where you were going with it. Yeah. He's funny enough, but he's he's not handsome enough. You gotta Johnny be handsome, Depp be handsome Jack. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Well, well, Johnny Johnny Depp has a, a an unfortunate amount of baggage that goes along with that. That's really that's not, not his fault. So that's, that's not I know his it's fault. I know it's not his fault. I know it's not his fault, but it that that just sucks because he he probably would be okay. I don't know. He's a little too like dour for Jack. He's yeah. he's very like Orlando Bloom maybe. Okay. I I would like to see him in a comedy role. I don't know if he's funny enough. I it's been a yeah. While. I've never I've never seen him be okay. So I think that Jack has to be sarcastic which takes comedic timing which i mm -hmm. don't think orlando bloom actually i don't know i've never seen him in a comedic role so i i don't know <sighs> Are, wasn't, wasn't he in pirates like yeah but he wasn't yeah. funny in pirates at all like everybody was around he? him yeah. yeah he's a straight no. actor yeah everyone just, around like that, him uh, was funny it's been so long he since i've seen it i guess one. Mm. so like that's the thing like i i i am one of those people that will never like like people know what they're able to do right so like actors probably know whether or not they admit to themselves or not what they're capable of <laughs> right sometimes maybe they haven't stretched they haven't come outside of their comfort zone and their comfort zone makes them money so they just stick to that right um and the same thing i'm sure goes for casting directors and the same thing i'm go i'm sure goes for streamers and the people that hire streamers and all the everything in between um however I feel like any everybody's capable of more. Bradley Cooper is actually a really good suggestion. I do think he could do it. If not Claptrap, why not Jack? Yeah. That's Bradley a good point. Cooper would be great because he's done he's done a lot of very interesting stuff. Some and stuff com and comedy stuff. Didn't he do um he did Wedding Crashers? That's a great movie. And he was funny in it. He played the he played a bad guy, but he yeah. was uh he was funny in it. 
So Bradley Cooper, uh, I don't think a lot of people know this, but I think one of his earlier roles was as a supporting actor on a show called Alias. Do you guys remember that show? I do remember I Alias. Alias was a it. very, very show. smart show. Yeah. So very smart show. Alias was, um, okay, so the girl that played in it, was the Jennifer Garner? Uh, yes, Jennifer Garner, who originally was on a show called Felicity, and then she jumped to Alias, and that was her starring role. And Bradley Cooper was like her best friend in that show, and he was the kind of like the comedy relief. He was very normal, and she was a spy, and there was some weird. There were. It was funny because that show I've seen it many, many, many times over and over again, and it's one of those shows that like it starts to have some sci-fi stuff that. You don't realize it's sci-fi until you have watched it a few times and you're like, wait, <laughs> because it kind of like eases into that really slowly and it doesn't seem like sci-fi. It's all very real and realistic until suddenly it's not. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> How do we get here? Um, but anyway, it, it was very funny because he was the comic relief. He was kind of the normal guy that's just in her life that like doesn't know about all the crazy until later. Um and he had this like very supporting role. And then he did, uh, God, what was the show in Las Vegas? Hangover? Yeah. I think yeah. it's called Hangover. Yeah. yeah. So that movie launched a bunch of careers. His, and then there was like another funny guy. There was a bunch of funny guys. Um, he did that and it was hilarious and ridiculous. Um, and then he did uh, Limitless, the movie. And like a bunch of other crazy things. And they were all so different from each other. So he's very much capable of multiple things. And it would yes. be cool to see him do this. So we, we could we could sit here and do this for another hour, I think, at least. Probably. Yeah. But <laughs> we are so, so, so way over where Oops. we usually would have to end the show. And I'm sad because chat has been so interactive with this conversation today. And that goes back to what I was talking about before. It's about passion. Everybody ha is passionate about this movie. Everybody wants it to be the best movie that it possibly can be. And Liz, I, we, we could, like I said, we could go on forever and ever and talk about this. And when more movie news happens, uh, we would love to have you back on. I would Not, love to be back on. Please, we, we would love to because there's just so much to talk about and, and theorize. Um, maybe not for like the next drop, but as we get like a story outline and we have like something really like to hold on to and talk about more, that would be a, a really good time to have you back on. So yeah. um, we really can't wait to do so. so but in the meantime, because it is that time, Season Pass 2 is out now. With the, desi uh, the designer's cut is already out, as most of you know, and the director's cut is coming out very, very soon, March 18th of next month. Liz, again, thank you so much for being here today. It was so much fun to talk with you and to just hang out, because that's basically what we did. We just spent two hours just hanging out with chat, which was yeah. really like the coolest yeah. thing. Um, you said it before. By all means, one more time, where can the people find you on the Interbuts? I'm everywhere at Schviffy5. It's S-C-H-V-I-F-T-Y-F-I-V-E. Cool. And Tess? Uh, right here on the Borderlands channel a lot. Um, I'll be back Sunday for sure, possibly before then, uh, with some more tales from the Borderlands, which... Liz, you now have no excuse. You have to play. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I want to play Borderlands 1 with you guys because that would be really fun. <laughs> We both do it together. Um, anyway, yeah. So uh, the interwebs, uh, Instagram, Twitter, at Tess Games, Twitch, Tessachka is just Tessa, C H K A, and right here on the Borderlands channel on a very regular basis. <laughs> and Mitsu? Twitch.tv slash Mitsu, M I T S U. Twitter.com slash Mitsu Show, M I T S U S H O W. And I would plug anything else, but honestly, I'm not going to upload to YouTube anytime soon, so let's not even worry about that. It's not even, <laughs> not even worth addressing. So, you know, it's it's been a wild episode. What what a time. Tess, bring us home, please. It's been so fun, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Liz, for joining us. Go check out her IMDP, Elizabeth Olin. And uh, you will be able to say, when she gets her Oscar someday, 
that you knew her back time with like back in in the old days of twitch and it'll be really cool because seriously <laughs> um she's amazing so make sure you follow her on all the things and uh thank you guys so much for watching on youtube and facebook and steam and twitch and listening on spotify and soundcloud and itunes and TuneIn and youtube music and stitcher i will put links to liz's channels and misu's channels and my channels if you if you're curious uh in the podcast description section definitely check out the movie when it comes out we'll be talking about it lots more um we're excited i'm super excited we're all super excited uh we love this franchise and we love Borderlands and Gearbox and everything that they do and we're just psyched to see what comes of all of this um I'm sure it will be exciting and awesome uh we'll be back next week on Twitch and Facebook and YouTube <laughs> uh and Steam at 2 p.m eastern 11 a.m pacific and also Liz will return with triple g triple underscore g for a very special episode of Ultimate Vault Hunters next Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> and uh, you guys check out the podcast. Thank you so much for being here and being amazing. We really appreciate it. Of course. Super glad to be here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So way late, like an hour late. And we apologize <laughs> for fun. that. Sorry for keeping you guys. <laughs> but on behalf of Tess, myself, and the entire content creation team, thank you so much for joining us as you do every single week. Now go forth and make some mayhem.